Hi, my name is Roxy Monroe, and I am so sorry to have missed TLA and all you great librarians. And also, I'm very sad to have missed my first illustrator sketch off. But um, never mind, I'm here now, and Holiday House has asked me to do a little piece for you guys on the making of Dive In, my new book with them that's coming out April 7th. So um, it's gonna be kind of like uh, how the sausage is made, but I will do a short presentation on how I do my books. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share my screen for a few minutes, okay? And we will go to dive in. Let's see, play. So Dive In was written and illustrated by me and published by Holiday House. So let's look at how it was made. And by the way, I want to do a quick shout out for the Texas Library Association. For those of you who might be seeing this that aren't members of the Texas Library Association, you can tag TLA on social media with posts and videos. Um, hashtag TXLA20 uh, on Facebook at Texas Library Association, on Twitter at TXLA, and on Instagram at, at TXLA under hash um, 1902. So this is my new book, uh, again out April 7th from Holiday House. And I am usually considered, I'm a visual thinker, and that means that usually I work out the story with the pictures first and then write the text. So this is the storyboard. You have to kind of figure out how things are gonna be uh, placed on the book and how much space to give everything. We have quite a bit of back matter too. And my dear editor said to me, Roxy, we know that you like to do your drawings first, but you must do the text first because this is such a complex book. The text and the art has to be, the art director has to be able to put the text in. Um, and wrap it around and had the right space and that sort of thing. So we went back and forth on it. The first thing I do when I start a book, I usually do the storyboard and a dummy, but in this case I did the storyboard and now I'm starting to write. First I had to have a list of characters. So these are just a few of the fish and the corals that I wanted to show. Uh, the book is, the conceit of the book is that all the fish are to real size. So I had to just figure out size and then what color they were. Were they in schools? Were they separate? Were they in pairs? So that you can get an idea about the visual look and the page turn of the book. So finally, I got it down to these guys. So this is my cast of characters and which spreads they will go on. Um, now I'm starting to actually write the text you can see here. Um, just make notes. I'm very sloppy. You'll find out very shortly when you see the rest of my. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you. Remind me to show you um, a quick uh, trick to my studio. Uh, so here's when I'm writing the text. I have these guides. I have um, all kinds of books, internet, museums, uh, talking to people. So I've compiled my information from all different sources. Uh, here's my sloppy table. <laughs> As you can see, um, starting to do the sketches for the dummy here. And more sketches for the dummy, some of the reference books, where the placement will be. Uh, I wanted to mention a thing about materials too. Um, I used to get these pallets that were about $1.50 a piece and I would burn through plastic white pallets, a couple of those a day. And one day I walked in, because you see my inks, I use colored ink, and the inks um, are waterproof. So they, they ruin a palette, you can't get the ink out. So you have to use new fresh palettes all the time. And one day I walked into the kitchen, the rare time I go in the kitchen, my husband was making our brunch, and I saw that plastic egg carton and went, whoa! And now I have an unlimited amount, um, depending on how many eggs we eat, <laughs> of these clear, perfectly sized um, containers to mix my colors in. I use a Rapidograph ink pen and sometimes an old-fashioned Crowquill ink pen for some of the details. So um, this is when I was starting to do the black and white sketches and create the dummy, which is I uh, just cut it up and paste it just like you do when you're in grade school, making a little baby book. Um, here are the sketches I um, was working on. You can see I'm doing more and more research here. More and more research here. Here on this day, I was working on the moray eel, keeping it up and visual so that I can, when I 
make sure that the picture and the art has to match. So this is the um, way I do the actual finished art. This is the rough sketch. I do it on graph paper. The book trim size, by the way, is 10 inches by 20 inches, except we also have a 40 inch spread. So I do it um, kind of sloppy like that. And then here I'm getting a little more refined, figure out which creatures are there. I'm gonna put text in two places. I refined it further and decided to put text only in the upper left corner and consolidate the art in the middle and on the right. So here's the first um, inking of the guy and not uh, your girl. And as you can see, I lay in blue shadows and then I come back in and lay in kind of a, a lavender shadow. Um, and that gives the piece volume and uh, depth. And here I've started to do his lips. You can see the paint on the right side. And here's the finished piece. So you see, this is the, you know, giving it the roundness and fullness. And then here's the finished piece next to my other favorite creature, the octopus. Um, again, here's another example of the queen trigger fish, just inked it in, just starting to paint on the original art. Now you will notice that there are cut out pieces of paper around it, and that's because depending on where I am in the art, I mask off the other areas after I've developed a sense of color for the piece, because I don't want to drop paint on it, beat it up, scratch it, I keep it very, try to keep it pristine. Here's one of my favorite guys. This is the scorpion fish. So you can see the underpainting there is the kind of bluish, bluish color, then the lavender, and I'm just starting to introduce the, what we call the local color, the real color. So there's that guy, there he is. I was starting to get excited. And you can see on the right side, I do many, many sample colors to get the exact right color. And here he is, we popped his eyes in. I sent this to my editor. <laughs> Mary Cash, and she wrote back for me, I'm in love. <laughs> and then here he is in the finished piece. This is not the greatest print. I'm waiting for the really good scans to come back from the publisher. Uh, so when I do these pieces, um, because my books, uh, each page goes to the next page and fits together kind of like a puzzle, um, I have to keep the page turn colors very consistent. So I had to do all, first thing I did after doing the inking was do all the blue. And you can see in some cases, I've already started to mask off the areas. But I did all the blue at once, of course, I had to mix a lot of paint up so that I wouldn't um, run out of color and have to remix it because there's so many colors, it's so hard to match a color perfectly. Uh, and of course, I had to make a lot. And also another thing I do when I'm doing a very, um, piece with a lot of flat area, I add a chemical to it that retards the drying so that you can do it and it's all kind of smooth and doesn't have those. Sometimes you can have little changes that look good, but sometimes it messes things up. So I like to keep it pretty painterly, but smooth. So here's all the drying, all the um, spreads I was doing, not all, but quite a few of them. Uh, so, did the spreads, now I, as you see it's masked off and now I'm starting to do, in this case, there were four spreads that had a certain kind of um, a coral reef uh, in it. So, um, here I am starting that. Uh, here, again, it's masked off. This one has the, uh, doesn't have any of that kind of coral in it, but I started to do the blue shadows in this. And here again, yeah, I started the blue shadows, the, tur the turquoise shadows are in there. It isn't quite all inked in, you'll notice on the lower left, an indication of coral. And then I've actually started to do some of the artwork on that. And you can see again, the messy <laughs> paint tests. Uh, here, this is kind of fun. So here I've done the turquoise, but not the shadows. And then some color has been put in. And as far as the brain coral down there goes, I just love that treatment. And what happened there is I had made a mistake and I tried to fix it. And all of a sudden this wonderful kind of thing happened because I put opaque in it. And all of a sudden it, I was like, I'm gonna keep that. Um, so I did it over here on the right too. Now this isn't a uh, perfectly colored uh, slide, but this, I really am crazy about this guy. The text again goes in the upper left. And um, you see we have uh, the trump, Trumpet fish, 
the trunk fish and the crab. And the crab, I just adore. And I, and I look at it now and I'm like, I don't know how I painted that. <laughs> it just, uh, I just love that so much. Um, and here we have one of the three panel ones that I'll be showing you. The, on the right side is the light table. I put the sketch under the light table and then draw over it with ink. So here's another fish. This is the cover fish and also in the book. This is the parrotfish, rainbow parrotfish. So here, it, you, as I said, I've done the background and a little bit of the coral reef. And now here's this guy. Now he has a very distinct pattern. So I created the pattern on an underlay or overlay as you may so that I could get it right. And then I took that and put it underneath this guy on the light table like this so I could see what, what I, where I had to go. I have a little map there for how I'm gonna treat these scales. And here I'm starting to paint the scales, right? And the shadows have already been put on this to give it the volume and then the scales are starting. And this is when all the scales have put, been put on. Um, a little lighter to give transparency under the um, flap there. <laughs> Forgot the name of that, um, the wing. And then here's the finished piece. So, and again, the, he, the colors um, dis dissipate as he gets closer to the, the distinct scales change as it gets closer to the head. Here is the moray eel. So he's partially done, he looks kind of weird, looks a little ill. Here I'm putting more and more. Um, you can see everything's masked off. This takes about a day, at least a day to do this, these uh, little spots on him. And there he is, this isn't quite the same, very good color. And again, that's the text that you will find uh, in the book. And here, um, okay, so now back to the writing. So here's, here are my first text for Coral Prayers. And then this is me um, after I've, you know, going in and reading it, sometimes you need to do it in print. So here I am reading and editing my own print copy. This is something my husband, who's a writer, came in and then after I read it, he went over it. Um, here, the red are my editor's notes and I checked off, every, I did all her notes and then checked off things as I dealt with them. And then this is a, another stage, you go back and forth, back and forth, this is with the interaction with the art director to see if you know I was on the right pathway in terms of quantity of text. So in the book also at the end of the book is a map that lets people know that all this time whether you knew it or not you have never seen the sky you have never left the ocean you have been swimming along and this is uh, my preliminary sketches on that figure out the plan exactly this is the way it wound up this isn't quite the way it is in the book, but this is the sketch that I gave the art director. I also did a map in the book that shows, which I'll show you in a minute, which has all the um, places where you would find coral reefs. And now the tough thing is, it took us a long time to find a title for this book. Uh, so we have to do a cover. At one point I said scales, tails, and fins. But um, eventually a friend of mine who's a diver came up with dive in and I was like, yes. So I like bold, strong display fonts and covers. So this is my sketch for the cover and I did that kind of rough dive in. And then this is the final cover very close to it as you can see. Uh, here I am delivering all the art, very excited to um, Holiday House. The, my editor Mary Cash is in the black and white stripes. And FYI, um, Generally books show up in, li in bookstores and libraries two years after you sign the contract. So this is about one year, took me about one year to do the book. This is handing it in about uh, nine, or, nine or 12 months after I got the contract and then it goes to the publishing house and they do their magic. So I just wanna tell you real quick where I do my books. So this is the outside of my building in Long Island city. It's across the East River from Manhattan. I take a ferry these days or you can take the subway. And my studio is around the corner on the third floor. There's a third floor there in the back and I face north. This is my studio. It is never this studio but it is never this clean. I cleaned it up for the photographs. Uh, here's a big project I was working on several years ago that took six months to no, three months to ink in and three months to paint. A huge 
maze or an app. There I am, as I mentioned before, inking it in. Then you can see the palette that I used to have that I would throw away and replace with the egg cartons, which is nice recycling. Those are my paints, paint brushes. This is a cleaned up, <laughs> cleaned up office area, part of my book area, part of my other book area. And this is, uh, I live way over um, by the Empire State Building and the green is the East River. I either take a subway or a taxi across, or I could walk all the way from the Empire State Building, I live two blocks away from it, all the way up, all the way up, up, up to the bridge. And then I could walk across the 59th Street Bridge. I have done that once or twice, well, more than that, half a dozen or a dozen times. And I've come to my studio. This is the view from the roof of the studio. So, thanks, and um, if you go to my website, you'll find more information, a lot of coloring sheets, mazes to download, activity guides for all my holiday house books, how-to demos, interviews, information on school visits, and right now, because of the uh, coronavirus situation, coronavirus situation, I'm also doing uh, Zoom online school with, uh, virtual school visits for children. So now let's see if we can get off this. Okay, so um, I'll, a couple more quick things. By the way, this is my studio. You see over there where I put everything in my flat files and book inventory. And then back there is where I do a lot of work too. So this is dive in. I wanna show you a couple quick things before we close. I'm not gonna show you the whole book. <laughs> Um, so, for example, the way the fold-outs work, here you're tootling along, swimming, and all of a sudden you see this. Now, you may not notice that to start, but you see that something's happening behind here, even though we're talking about the queen angelfish. And then we turn it, ah, what's happening? And this is the huge fold-out, and this guy flips around, here you have the text, and what happened, it's very hard to do a center fold and have everything not have blank, have the pages fit together. And in this case, if the person puts it back wrong, they're still getting a understandable and cohesive picture if they fold it wrong. And then also as you go through the book, and of course if this one comes back and then we go back deeper into the reef. We also have, remember I mentioned that we had that sketch, so this is the pathway that you're swimming, taking through the reef. And here we have information on protecting coral reefs, learning more about them, a glossary, an index, which I know if Mary Cash did this, and I know it's very, uh, a lot of librarians like to have an index. And then this is the map in the back um, that I discussed that shows where all the uh, coral reefs are. So thank you all very, very much. Um, I hope we can all get together next year at TLA and uh, have a great rest of the spring.